What's up guys, Sound Alchemist here once again bringing you 40 epic facts on the individual characters of the Warhammer 40k universe. This time we are going to Fenris and we will learn about the Primarch, Lehman Russ. Just like all the other Primarchs, Lehman Russ was taken from the Emperor and he landed on the icy death world of Fenris. Upon escaping from his capsule, Russ came face to face with a massive mother, Thunderwolf. The wolf sensed Russ's kindred spirit and took him in. He was raised alongside a few of her pups. A few months passed and a hunting party of Fenrisian tribesmen came across the Thunderwolf, her cubs, as well as Russ. These men needed food and therefore attacked the wolf with arrows and spears, killing the mother Thunderwolf and a few of her cubs. In anger, Russ retaliated against the men and massacred over a dozen warriors before they could see that he was in fact human. They lowered their weapons and the blood poured from the Primarch's mouth and fists. He stood his ground ready to attack. The warriors managed to incapacitate Russ and take him to the chieftain. The chieftain saw potential in him and allowed him to live among the Fenrisian tribe and to be raised a warrior and learn their ways of life. Russ quickly adapted to his new lifestyle, mastering combat with axes, swords, and spears. Russ realized that he was more human than wolf, but stronger than the two. He led his tribe to thousands of victories, and for his deeds, the chieftain named him Lehman of the Russ. Upon the chieftain's death, Russ was named their new leader. His fame quickly spread throughout all of Fenris. He was able to defend his tribe from whole armies all by himself without a scratch. He could also wrestle down a Fenrisian mammoth and could tear an entire oak tree from the ground. His infamy and accomplishments would see him soon become the king of all Fenris. The Wolf King's first order was to announce a truce between all the humans and wolves of Fenris. His kingdom was known throughout space, and eventually it got word to the Emperor. Upon landing on Fenris, Russ would not bow down to the Emperor until he could see him as a worthy threat, and the two partook in a series of three challenges. The Emperor stated that if he won, all he wanted was a drink with Russ, and if Russ won, the Emperor would serve him for a year. The two agreed to this, and the first competition began. It was an eating competition. The Emperor ate well, but Russ was already consuming three times as much as he, and so the first challenge went to the Wolf King. Russ was enjoying his sport and therefore announced the second challenge to be a drinking contest. Again, the Emperor drank a large amount, but it was nothing compared to Russ. Russ was victorious once again. The Emperor was disappointed in his son's actions and called him a glutton and a drunk who could achieve nothing in life except to stuff his face and yell out hollow boasts. Russ grew silent as he unsheathed his blade. He announced that the third challenge was going to be combat. Any weapons could be used. The Emperor took off his cloak and stood, revealing his golden armor as he stood towering over all those before him, including Russ. This time the challenge went to the Emperor. He defeated Russ with a mighty blow from his power glove knocking him unconscious. When he came to, Russ admitted defeat, and with a bloody smile, swore allegiance to the Emperor of Mankind. After a few weeks of learning the ways of the Imperium, Russ took command of his Space Marine Legion, which he renamed the Space Wolves. He then replaced his greatsword with a reforged frostblade called Mjolnar. During the Great Crusade, Russ was always in the thickest of battles. He always led his forces from the front lines, and he soon conquered many planets for the Imperium. During a joint mission with the Dark Angels against the planet Dulan, Russ was personally insulted by the planet's leader, and he wanted revenge. Lionel Johnson, Primarch of the Dark Angels, beat Russ to the punch and beheaded Duneland's leader. Angered at not having killed him himself, Russ punched the lion square in the jaw. The resulting battle lasted over a week. Russ burst out laughing at how immature their little brawl was, and Johnson took this as an insult. Johnson then got up and knocked him unconscious. 
This led to a bitter feud between the Space Wolves and the Dark Angel that has lasted through the millennia. Some sources say that Rus pleased the Emperor so much so that he and his legion became the unofficial executioners of the Imperium. Therefore, Rus may be the reason as to why the Second and the Eleventh Legions no longer exist, though this may just be speculation. Despite Rus being ill-tempered and argumentative, Rus was also very well liked by his Primarch brothers, especially Robute Gilliman. He said that Rus was one of the dauntless few, meaning that he, along with Dorn, Sanguinius, and Manus, exemplified the Emperor the most. Angron, Primarch of the World Eaters, refused to end the usage of his butcher's nails upon his legion after the Emperor decreed it. Rus was dispatched to bring Angron to Terra in answer for his insubordination. As expected, Angron met Rus with a fury of attacks. The two Primarchs clashed, but Angron came out victorious. During the fight, the Space Wolves created a blockade around the planet. Rus explained that even though he had lost the fight, Angron was not fit to lead his legion, and that is why he is trapped. Infuriated, Angron refused to back down, and a minor battle ensued between the World Eaters and the Space Wolves. Russ realized that his brother Primarch was a lost cause and ordered his Space Wolves to retreat. During the latter part of the Great Crusade, the Word Bearers, Space Wolves, and Thousand Sons were all sent out to claim Heliosa for the Imperium after the great kings refused to join. The might of these three legions was unstoppable, and the planet surrendered. Russ continued his purging of the planet, massacring thousands, but the thousand suns protected the destruction of the planet's great libraries. This action infuriated Lehman Russ, who already disliked psychers and sorcery. Russ viewed it as a weakling's futile attempt at attaining power and the two legions got into a brief but bitter skirmish. Although the two weren't fighting seriously, a rift was opened between the two legions. Luckily, Logar, Primarch of the Wordbearers, stepped in to disperse the two legions, and they left the world peacefully. Later, during the Council of Nikea, Rus was called in to speak against the use of warp and psychic abilities. He was all for the banning of psychers in the Imperium, and this further added to the flames of war between Magnus and Russ. Magnus, who had learned of the Horus' betrayal, had no choice but to break the laws of the Nikea Council and psychically warn the Emperor, but in doing so, he opened the barriers protecting Terra from all the horrors of the warp. He also ruined the Emperor's webway project and thousands of Terran lives were lost. His message was never received to the Emperor, and the Emperor was so angered at this that he sent Rus to bring Magnus to pay for his crimes. Horus, who had been appointed War Master, ordered Rus to assault and destroy the Thousand Sons instead of just apprehending them. Rus attempted to peacefully find a solution, and he sent Casper Hauser, but this was actually a chaos spawn in disguise, and the message never reached Magnus and so the destruction of the Thousand Suns began. Thousands died during the assault on Prospero. For days, the world burned until the two Primarchs met in battle. The battle was all in favor of Rus, since Magnus wasn't using any of his psychic abilities in atonement for the destruction he unknowingly caused. The Great Wolf beat Magnus to a pulp, and picked up Magnus and broke his back upon his knee. Just as the death blow was about to be delivered, Magnus gave in to Chaos and used his sorcery to save himself and what remained of his legion. After the burning of Prospero, Rus and his Space Wolves were surprised by an attack by the Alpha Legion, which forced them to retreat to the Yarant Nebula. Here, the White Scars came to their aid, but had to retreat due to avoid becoming surrounded by the enemy. Rus was fighting a losing war, and he admitted defeat. He told Bjorn that serving blindly as the Emperor's executioner was a mistake, and that from now on, if he were to live from this battle, he would walk on his own path. And so Rus led a desperate attack against the Alpha Legion. During this suicidal battle, 
Rus unknowingly fought against the Alpha Legion's Primarch, Alpharius, who was actually disguised as a member of his own Terminator bodyguards. And just as the battle was becoming a hopeless one, the Dark Angels came to the Space Wolves' rescue and managed to force the Alpha Legion to retreat. Upon being saved by the Lion, the Great Wolf took his Legion to Terra and assisted Malkador in planning an assassination attempt against Horus. Russ announced his plans to take the fight to the traitors and departed Terra. Once the battle for Terra had begun, the distress signal reached the Space Wolves too late, and his wolves arrived during the retreat of the Chaotic Forces. Years after the end of the Horus Heresy, Russ gave his speech to his Space Wolves. He said, In the end, I will return, for the final battle, for the wolf time. He then proceeded to take his own personal bodyguards, except for Bjorn, and entered the Eye of Terror. Bjorn was chosen to lead the Space Wolves, and every thousand years he tells the story of the Great Wolf to his legion. Now Bjorn is encased in a dreadnought, and is currently the oldest dreadnought alive. Now in the 40k millennia, the Space Wolves have began searching for Rus in what is called the Great Hunt, and even though they have searched far and wide, no sign of the Great Wolf has appeared. Many Rune Priests believe that Rus is actually in search of the Tree of Life in order to bring back the Emperor of Mankind. Many theories are made on his whereabouts, but Magnus the Red has kept the Great Wolf's whereabouts a secret. The Great Wolf would wear his Relic Helm of Rus into battle in order to channel his ferocity into his Frostblade Kraken Maul, whose teeth were torn off of a giant Fenrisian Kraken Beast. During Lehman Russ's battle with Angron, his weapon Kraken Maul was destroyed. Russ went back to Fenris and tore the teeth off of another giant Kraken in order to forge his new blade, Mjolnar. It is said that the Imperial Guard have named their battle tank Lehman Russ after the Great Wolf's stubbornness and ferocity in battle. And that was 40 facts on the Primarch of the Space Wolves, Lehman Russ. Let me know who you guys want to hear about next time in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. And as always, subscribe to the channel for more epic 40k content. I have been the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, signing out.